We're now going to look at two links to the same ISP, but with load sharing. It's a little bit unusual to buy a circuit or connection and leave it idle, as we saw in the previous example. I mean, usually what happens is we use the main link, we're very happy with it until the day it breaks. And then we discover that the backup doesn't actually work, even though it's there and BGP may be working. So N sites tend to buy maybe two equal capacity circuits and balance traffic over those two links. Much more common. So let's have a look at the diagram. The link from router A to C is one link. The one from B to D is the second link. Again, we're using AS100 for the upstream provider and AS65534, the private AS for the customer end site. And router E, again, is removing the private AS and any customer sub-prefixes from what AS100 is announcing to the internet. So how would we configure this? Well, as before, we announced the slash 19 aggregate on each link. And in fact, as we work through this series, you'll find that's a common theme. We always announce the aggregate on all external links. It's one of the industry best practices. It's the expectation from the regional registries when they delegate address space to an end, end user or end site. What we're going to do now, though, is take this slash 19 that we're announcing and divide it into two. So we're going to announce two slash 20s as well, one on each link. So the first slash 20 will go on the first link. The second slash 20 will go on the second link. And what will happen here is incoming traffic for the first slash 20 will use the first link. And incoming traffic for the second slash 20 will use the second link. Now, this is just where we start. Please don't think that right now this will give you perfect load balancing. It's unlikely it will. End user traffic throughout the day and the evening can be quite variable. But it's a place where we start. We divide it into two, see what happens. And what we end up doing as we work through this is varying this split until we get the perfect load sharing that we are after. It might be that we have to take one of the 20s and divide into two 21s. 121 on one link, 121 on the other, and so on. We accept the default route from the upstream provider as before. We're not going to do anything special here. Nearest exit is good enough for now. We're going to the same upstream provider. And as with most end sites, the vast majority of the traffic will be incoming as the end users will be consumers and downloaders. Let's look at the configuration. So on router A, we originate the slash 19 aggregate as before. And we also now originate 1 slash 20. So let's take the first slash 20 out of that 19. If you look at the prefix list, we're now allowing out the slash 19 aggregate as well as the slash 20. Inbound, it's the same as before, just the default route. If we look at router B, Again, we originate the aggregate, and we also originate the second slash 20. So that one begins at 100.64.16.0 slash 20. The prefix list contains the 19 and the 20, and that is what gets announced to the upstream provider. If we look at the upstream, the configuration is very similar to what it was before. We're doing the default originate, so our customer gets the default route. We have the outbound prefix list to let that default out to our customer. And then inbound, we have a prefix list, which allows the customer prefixes in. But notice the difference from the previous example. We're now allowing the slash 19, but we're allowing slash 20s as well. We're not saying which of the two slash 20s out of that aggregate, but we just allow either or. This is more flexible for the upstream provider, because if the end user decides to swap around the slash 20s they're announcing on the link, the upstream provider doesn't have to make any changes. So this scales much better. Router D configuration is exactly the same. If we go to router E, which is AS100's links to their upstream provider, we strip out the private AS because, as before, we don't announce private ASs to the internet. And we have an outbound filter that only allows the slash 19 aggregate out. 
There is no need for the global internet to see the two slash 20s that the end site is announcing to AS100 for traffic engineering. This is local traffic engineering information and it's not useful or helpful for the global internet to see it. What about the default route for outbound traffic? Well, we can originate the default route in the IGP on the border routers and rely on the IGP metrics for nearest exit. BGP will just have one best path, which means that all traffic from the network will just go one way. What we want to try and do is maybe balance the outbound traffic a little bit better on the two outbound links to the upstream provider. So what we do is we simply originate the default route into our chosen IGP. The slide shows an example of how to do it in Cisco IOS using OSPF and using ISIS. We'll look at this in a little bit more detail later on. So again, note the load sharing configuration is only on the two customer routers. The upstream ISP simply has to remove customer prefixes from external announcements and remove the private AS from the external announcements as well. As we'll see later on, we could use BGP communities. And in fact, these days, in more developed networks, network operators prefer the use of BGP communities for this type of traffic engineering. 